So this took a long time, but it's finally done. The plane was down for about six weeks altogether, and during that time, I made one important upgrade, new seat belts. This was a much needed safety upgrade, and I was pretty surprised about the cost, but it's an airplane, and most important, it's done, and I have good brand new seat belts and shoulder harnesses, which is fabulous. So why did this take so long? Well, the new cylinder really wasn't the issue, but when we were putting in the new cylinder, we discovered that an air duct hose from the cowling to the carburetor had a hole in it and needed to be replaced. And this probably was the original cause for the valve failing in the first place, since the engine had been running at full rich for we don't know how long, however long that hole was there. So it may sound like a small deal, being this hose needed to be replaced, but we couldn't find the part anywhere. I mean, we contacted junkyards, all these different parts departments and all these different parts companies and aftermarket, and we couldn't find that small hose anywhere. So we finally had to break down, contact Cessna, and Cessna Textron had to make me one. It really wasn't a cost issue. Rather, it was a time issue. It took five weeks for that to happen and get shipped out. Then, as we were installing the new cylinders, we looked at the mag wires and they really were due for a replacement. Being that they were over 20 years old, it was a safety issue and that new cylinder really wasn't firing very well. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger and had new mag wires installed in the plane. And this leads me to my next comment. The one thing I have done with this aircraft is fix everything. Number one, being for safety. And number two, when I go to sell it, I want the new buyer to have as many of these little squawks fixed as possible. And actually, selling it may be happening soon, but I'll give a little more information on that later. So it's all back together now, and now we have to break in the new cylinder, and there are some specific instructions to do that. All right, so we're doing the break-in procedure, actually, and uh, what we have to do, basically, to break in a new cylinder properly is... Um, uh, is fly the airplane pretty much in full power for two hours straight. Uh, there's detailed information and detailed uh, instructions in the Lycoming um, document that they gave us, and also I printed out a separate document and with full instructions of what we're to do today. So um, everything's really, really spelled out. So basically for the first hour is we have to fly at uh, full power for, um, I'm sorry, about 75% power, 2650 RPM for about an hour, and then that second hour, we have to adjust the power settings between 2450 RPM and 2650 RPM, which is 65 and 75% power. Uh, no long descents, uh, no uh, rapid uh, reduction of altitude, and then um, do that for the second hour, land, check our fluids, check our oil, check our fuel, make sure everything's cool, and then repeat the process over again. We have to do that twice to break in the cylinder. So far, we're at 5,500 feet. Everything is running smooth. This engine is running perfectly um, at 2550 RPM. It's a smooth flight, and uh, everything seems to be perfect for our first hour of the airplane. So I have 10 hours to break in the new cylinder. This was four, and the next four will be done going to a pretty cool place. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and if you are over 50, get up and get in the air.